Hello everyone, I'm Deepak Patel. I'm responsible for the OT and IoT security business here at Zscaler. And today we are gonna to talk about how Zscaler is extending the zero trust concepts into the OT and IoT landscape. But before we go into that, let me give you a little bit of a brief about what is Zscaler and who we are. Who we are is we are a scalable, one of the largest zero trust exchange platforms out there. You can even consider us as, as one of the largest cloud security vendors out there. We have been an industry leader in the SSE quadrant and we've been doing Zero Trust for more than a decade now. There are a couple of important metrics I'll give you here. One of them is about net promoter score. This is where, when you look at it across our verticals, about the 6,000 plus customers that we have, they're all out there championing Zscaler to their peers. That's one of the biggest metrics I can tell you. From a security platform perspective, we process more than about 200 billion transactions. That's how we get a lot of this data, the rich data that we are, we're giving you a cloud effect. To give you an interesting metric there, we process more transactions than all of Google put together from a search perspective. So that's that's the reason why this platform is so popular and why so many customers across all these verticals are using us. Let's take a look at what is it that we mean by the Zero Trust Exchange platform. It's about our 150 data centers. We are, we are providing a lot of these security services, whether it's secure internet access for users, whether it's secure internet access for workloads, or DLP protection, the cloud posture control, a lot of these capabilities are all delivered across our cloud, keeping in mind that we're, we're improving user experience. We're making sure that security and connectivity are all offered in a single platform. We've been doing this zero trust for users for a long time now. We are doing secure internet access for users, the secure private application access. You can talk about DLP protection. There's a long list of security capabilities that we bring to the table. We extended those to workloads. Now in this session, we are talking about how are we extending that to the OT and IoT landscape? Some of the top use cases happen to be privileged remote access, as well as device to internet or device to application connectivity. Let's switch gears and talk about what is, what is happening in this industry space today. Why are manufacturing companies looking at this? Industry 4.0 is a common keyword that's used, but at the end of the day, the reason there everybody's looking at it is because you wanna improve your processes, you wanna innovate on your business front. That brings in connectivity, meaning you're going to connect to a cloud computing platform that brings in cybersecurity risks. You cannot do all this industry 4.0 initiatives without actually addressing cybersecurity risks because it's not about data loss, it's really about uptime. Is people and plant safety at risk when you start connecting these systems? That's what you need to consider. You can have a great industry IoT platform that's sending data, but as soon as you tie in what we call as data collection and actuation on your factory floor, that increases the risk significantly. Now let's see what are customers trying to do and if they took a different approach, if they didn't take a zero trust based approach, what would they end up doing? What I've seen quite often is customers are taking like a traditional network approach. They're putting network security products like VPNs and firewalls, effectively creating a broad flat network. It looks great on paper, you get a lot of connectivity, it, it looks like it's gonna do its job, but here's where it falls flat. If you look at any of the attacks that have happened over the last 20 years, it follows pretty much the same pattern. Attackers find your attack surface. To a large extent, your firewalls and VPNs themselves become an attack surface. You look at one of the recent SSL vulnerabilities that affected your security platforms. If your security vendor is not like a SaaS vendor and can't apply patches in real time, that attack surface is gonna be out there. So that creates a, a big zero day vulnerability. Attackers use that, they will compromise that system, they will get into your ecosystem, they will start moving laterally. Once they start moving laterally, their next goal is to disrupt operations because that's where they can start extracting ransom from any company at this point. Now let's take a look at what is it that the Zero Trust Exchange architecture does differently and how do we help clarify this? Because a lot of the vendors today, including the traditional network security vendors are using this term I would say quite loosely or just relabeling their existing products and saying it is zero trust. There are five key components to it. When you look at a proxy-based zero trust exchange architecture, you have to really look at is that platform terminating connections? That's extremely important. You're making sure that that user is not on your network, that the user needs to only have connectivity to the application. So the first and foremost thing that needs to be done is terminating those connections. Then you have to verify the identity of that user. Again, separating identity and access is important. We have great partnerships with Okta and Microsoft. 
we will take the identity, we'll take location parameters, and then we'll start figuring out risk, meaning is this user coming from a managed device or an unmanaged device? If they're coming from an unmanaged device, you can apply different policies. Now we are going into the policy enforcement for part of it. Are we gonna allow, block, or even send them down a deception path? That's extremely important. This is where the continuous risk evaluation has prevent that compromise. Now, the very last step is connecting this user, this system to the internet, to SaaS applications, to private applications, or even to OT systems. That's the very last step. Again, I'll reiterate, it's not connecting the user to that network, it's connecting that user or that device specifically to that application that they want to have connectivity towards. These are the steps that are really required to eliminate the attack surface, stop compromise, prevent lateral threat movement, and ultimately prevent disruption of your operations or data exfiltration. Now look at it from a business perspective. This is what a business leader looks at and says, okay, these are the key things that we need to enable to effectively get to some form of industry 4.0. Work from anywhere business agility. Pre-COVID era, this was not a big thing. You could just fly in a technician to solve these problems. It was the best way of getting things done. What COVID has made people realize, even on the manufacturing side of the house, is you can now have technicians remotely connect to these systems in a secure manner, do kind of troubleshooting, early troubleshooting, and ship the parts in advance of a technician showing up there. It's not just for cost reasons. You can actually seriously improve the uptime and people and plant safety. When you look at the accelerated digitalization of the factory floor, you're talking about digitizing the physical processes. A lot of things have happened there. If you're just able to figure out which systems fail first or faster, you can significantly change what's happened. Again, I can give you the exa example of, of a railroad company that we're working closely with. For them, figuring out which of these ball bearings from which vendors fail first significantly affects them to the tune of millions of dollars on a yearly basis. Think about the impact that's gonna have on the profit margin. So it's not just about the keyword connectivity there, it's about enabling a new business model. Once you put connectivity in place, you have to really talk about cyber resilience. What happens if an attack is happening? If you look at the recent geopolitical risks, there's a lot of risk from a nation state attack perspective as well. You need to protect yourself so that zero trust cyber resilience is a big, big initiative for a lot of customers. Finally, you're looking at lowering costs for, from an infrastructure perspective and lowering complexity. How can you enable the plant operator to do their functions of producing all the quantities that, that they need to produce or keeping that uptime. So keeping all this in mind, you need to look for solutions that enable these use cases. Let's deeply look at the use cases that we provide for. It's about privileged remote access. I already talked about third parties requiring access to your OT systems, or it could be even the employees. So we'll go deeper into that in the next section. And the next one happens to be like zero trust within the factory floor. What happens when the user is on the factory floor? How do you ensure the same zero trust that we are providing for a remote user to also apply to users that are right next to that asset? Now talking about secure machine to application access. I, lock, I talk to a lot of manufacturing customers where they're aggregating what we call as a manufacturing execution systems in the cloud, in the private data centers, and they're using public networks like the internet to do that. How do you provide that kind of connectivity there? Secure internet access, your systems are getting more and more connected. How do you make sure that devices or OT systems are getting patches from the right locations, how do you inspect for it? And also when users are accessing the internet from the factory floor, how do you secure that? The last one is an interesting one, which is called OT deception. Think of this as creating like a digital image of your factory floor, where you're ensuring that if there's an attacker that's already on your IT network, how do you trip that attacker? How do you make sure that they're, they're found before they cause any damage? It's, it's kind of, Good to imagine that an attacker is always on your network because that's the whole zero trust model is to limit that blast radius. And OT deception is one of those great tools that will provide you that early warning signs as to there's possibly an attacker in your manufacturing side of the house or on the OT network, and you can help detect that. Let's take a look level deeper and see how this applies in the manufacturing floor. What you're seeing here is what's called the Purdue model of security. It is segregated into different logical sections. You have level zero with sensors, you have level one with the PLCs, level two with HMIs and SCADA systems, level three, which possibly the workstations and probably the historians. The challenge with these levels that I just talked about is you can't deploy any agents on them. So how do we provide for this security? So when we started looking at this problem, we found that putting these Zscaler solutions in the DMZ layer helps us solve for some of the main use cases. 
whether it's privileged remote access, the secure machine to application access, secure internet access, or OT deception. And I've called out a few components, whether it's the zero trust app connector, the branch connector, or the private service edge, and how we do it. Before we kind of delve into the technical depth of these use cases, I also want to mention that we work in an ecosystem where we are we're working with partners like Microsoft and a few others in terms of like asset discovery. If you look at Siemens, we are working with Siemens, not just for the remote access use case, we are also doing what we call as the ICS or network segmentation component. Again, it's understanding the fact that we are one of the key vendors in this zero trust space, but we can't solve for everything on day one. So that's where the partnerships come in place. Now, let's take a, a deeper look into these use cases. How are we enabling privileged remote access? There's a lot of constraints as you looked into it. If you're going down the deployment path, the only piece of software that needs to be deployed is what is called as an app connector. We have made several improvements to it over the last few years. Now the app connector for the OT version is available as a Docker container, which means you can run this on industrialized equipment that is just effectively a Raspberry Pi that can run in an industrial manufacturing floor. It is something that you can mount in a manufacturing rail mounted systems. So, really small footprint on a factory floor, but for the third party or the user, it's even more easy. There's nothing to download, no agents to run. You just open up a browser and you're immediately able to connect to an RDP, SSH, or a VNC system in an isolated manner. Meaning your third party can come in from their unmanaged device, authenticate themselves, connect to these resources. At the same time, if there's any kind of ransomware malware running on their devices, it will not be able to move laterally across that connection that we have created because it's a fully isolated RDP SSH connection. So lots of use cases there. I'll discuss shortly in the next section about how we are doing this with MN Energy and Siemens. Let's take a look at the next one, which is the zero trust within the factory floor. What happens when the user shows up at the factory floor? You want the same level of security. So this is where we are talking about bringing a slice of the Zscaler cloud from a traffic management perspective into what we call as a private service edge. So the user's traffic never leaves your factory floor unless it's trying to authenticate itself and the identity platform is in the internet or when the, the private service edge needs to connect to the Zscaler cloud for like policy management or for like software updates or for security updates. So this way we can provide a great user experience but also provide for zero trust within the factory floor. The next use case is a very interesting one. This is where we're talking about connecting machines to private applications. Well, the, the point here is we know there's ways of doing this with agents, but we also have modes of using this with tunnels and with what we call as a branch connector. Any Zscaler customer that has been with us for a long time knows that we already support this tunnel modes, but for devices specifically, over the years, we've added so much capacity in our cloud that we can now support millions and we are probably getting close to half a billion in terms of support. So a lot of these devices can be supported just with tunnels without having to deploy agents. We can get really deep. We have a customer use case where they're connecting over IPsec tunnels, but they're also deploying SSL certificates so that we can inspect the traffic. So we can provide the same level of security that we are providing for users when devices are connecting either to the internet or to the private application. Now there's a slight variance to this secure internet access as you would have known with our product. There's a new product line called the browser isolation. This really helps in the manufacturing floor. How does it help? A lot of times I see that employees that work in the manufacturing floor are given two devices, meaning one for accessing corporate application and one for accessing the manufacturing floor itself. We can actually combine the two into one and say whatever they're using for corporate use, they can bring it to the manufacturing floor. And if they want to access the internet at that point in time, they can open up what we call as a, a browser in our cloud and effectively get an isolated access to the internet. You don't bring anything back from the internet. It, it sounds really cool, but when you get to the details of it, you clearly see what's happening is the user opens up a browser in the Zscaler cloud. So whatever scripts are executing will execute in the browser in the Zscaler cloud instance. Once that browsing session ends, that browser is effectively closed and all the user is getting is streamed access. Now, along the same lines, I could give you a little bit more details as to how our privileged remote access use uh, the capability works. Because this happens to be one of the most popular use cases, I've gone a little deeper into explaining how this actually works. So if you look at the app connector component that, that you're seeing right now, 
what it's doing is it's converting the RDP SSH streams that are that are terminated right there and converting them into HTML5 stream. So the third party is never on your network. All they're seeing is a HTML5 stream of that RDP SSH or VNC asset that they can get access to. They're effectively limited to just keyboard and mouse control, which means you can't initiate data transfers of any sort. Now, if you want to initiate data transfers, it's, it's best to bring it through our Zscaler Internet Access platform, which can then do all kinds of advanced checks like whether it's sandbox file transfers or even DLP for that matter. So this is the model that I've seen a lot of customers deploy and they're really happy with it because, hey, there's no agents to deploy. And also their third parties or vendors don't have to deploy any piece of software. Now let's take a look at how MAN Energy has been doing this for a long time now. So I call MAN Energy or MAN Diesel as they were known before as the true pioneer in the space because when we first launched our zero trust per users about five, six years ago for private application access, they realized that this has actually more or better use case or application in their OT environment. What's their OT environment like? They may, MAN makes diesel engines, massive ones, like 10 feet by 20 feet wide, that goes into freight liners and cruise liners that don't belong to them. But they're on the hook for SLA. So how do they connect to these systems before Zscaler? So they were using a VPN, they had to go or a satellite link, and they had to call into the ships to say, hey, open up this firewall port now so that my technician can get access to it. There are multiple flaws to it, meaning once you use a VPN or a satellite link, it's an endpoint that an attacker can DDoS or they can use that as a compromising point. Now, MA and Energy didn't want to be the source of ransomware into someone else's ship. So they looked at our solution and said, this solves for all the challenges that they're looking at. Eliminating the attack surface, making sure that only the MA and technician can get access to it. And also an additional one wherein if they are to invite a third party over, how do they get third party access into these ships without adding any risk to it? So this is what they're doing. They're deploying the app connector in like a Docker container form factor. It ties back to our ecosystem. It's doing an inside out connection and whichever user wants to connect to it has to go through their corporate identity. It's, it's fully two factor and all the goodies that come with that. Now for third party access, they don't have to give them any agents. They just give them a URL and they can go to that URL, authenticate themselves and get specific access based on the user attributes that are configured. There. So this is how we are providing for user identity based segmentation and security and convenience are kind of bundled into one. Now let's take a look at the one of the bigger use cases that we have and with Siemens, there's lots of different use cases. Siemens has been a long time Zscaler customer. When they started deploying a lot of our solutions, they realized that it's not only useful for Siemens internal factories and production lines, but also useful for the Siemens business unit. So we have a lot of different partnerships. One of them is with the Scalens product line, where we are embedding our zero trust remote access solution into that industrial edge platform. One of the simple ways that they're doing it is for their own internal use case, they have X-ray machines that technicians need access to or developers need access to. They're embedding the Scalens Edge platform with the Zscaler solution into it and putting it into the X-ray machines. So when a technician needs access to it, they don't have to file an IT ticket. It's fully audited and logged as to this Siemens employee is connecting to this X-ray machine and this is exactly the functions that they're doing. There's no jump host to, to jump around. There's no firewall ports that they have to open and close. So it makes for a great user experience, but also making sure that even people that are not as much IT savvy or security savvy are able to do their functions, keeping security in mind. Now, what does this all mean? It's clear from all these use cases and solutions that we have built that Zero Trust is enabling new business models. It's not just about solving for security. It's combining that user experience, network and security that is delivered by a, a Zero Trust exchange platform like us that is making sure that these solutions are now mainstream. These solutions are fully validated as you've seen with our partnership with Siemens. I hope I've piqued your interest in Zero Trust for OT. Please reach out to our Zscaler field counterparts if you want to know more about our solutions. I really thank you for your time today. Thank you.